Siola, the mission arm of Vahio Whanoa Tonga, uh, which is for the Tongan Synod of the Methodist Church of New Zealand uh, and as a close partner with the Ministry of Pacific Peoples. Uh, can I also acknowledge the Tongan uh, Language Year Committee and thank you for all your work uh, for putting uh, this event together but also all the other activities throughout the year as well. Can I also acknowledge the teachers and kainga of the various early childhood education initiatives, uh, Mai Ainema, uh, which is for visiting from Tonga, and especially for the Tongan Language Week, and promoting healthy eating as well. Uh, can I acknowledge uh, David Rees for the museum and the collections of research, and also Lene um, Pohatu, the Tumuaki. And uh, as we were saying that uh, this is the third of our language weeks, another four more to go, Lene as well. Um, so thank you for hosting us and having us here as well. And um, can I also acknowledge our, our CEO, um, Laula Mack, Lene, and also Edward Morgan from TPK. Um, we are now joined together, uh, our two offices up here in Auckland. Uh, and so it's great that we're able to work collectively together. Um, and then can I also acknowledge Reverend uh, Tevita Finau. What I um, liked about what uh, Reverend Finau was talking about, that me being here today, was an opportunity to be able to see how an occasion like this uh, for the Tongan community uh, could be different from all the others. And I have to say that when we had the Samoan Language Week, we had it over here, and I'm sure that some of the Tongans who went there, like John uh, Pulu, would have said, hmm, okay. Uh, we had the Cook Island Language Week, we had it over here, and John would have said, not bad. And then when we come to the Tongans, well, they just turned everything around. Okay, and as only Tongans can do, we had a, a wonderful uh, big stage uh, and a great opportunity to be here. And isn't it interesting that all the other language weeks have got one week, but not the Tongans. You've stretched it over a year, as only Tongans can do, to make sure that we are loud and proud. So, so congratulations for that. I think that's a, a, an amazing achievement. And when Mabel from New FM uh, was uh, interviewing me, she said, so what's great about uh, our Tongans? So I, I tell you what is great is the fact is, is that uh, you do royalty and the monarchy like no other Pacific nation. But more importantly, if you're going to do something, you go all the way. Amen. And then isn't it great that you're now celebrating Tongan Language Week, not one week, not one month, but one whole year. <laughs> and that's uh, a great challenge for all of our other Pacific nations that we should too take the initiative uh, and also do that as well. So can I just acknowledge and thank you for that. When I have often talked uh, about uh, cultural capital, and I've said to people, and people say, well, give me an example of cultural capital. In other words, cultural capital is the ability to mobilize and motivate people for one common cause. And the example I always give is the 2011 World Cup, when for all the millions that were spent on trying to promote and present the World Cup. The World Cup came alive when Ikalatahi was coming into the Auckland International Airport. And I think every Tongan that was in Auckland went there. <laughs> and every brass band in Auckland went there as well. <laughs> and if you talk to Reverend Finau, he will tell you there was 8,000. You talk to John, there was 10,000. You talk to Setiliki, there were 12,000. All we know, there were a lot of Tongans. But wasn't it great that they were able to mobilize themselves under a cause, and that was to celebrate their team, come to take on the world. And I want to encourage you to say this, we may be small Pacific nations, but we are big in our heart and in our vision. And that's what we need to continue to do, to have a big vision about what we can achieve. And it's great that we have these language weeks, we have these opportunities to celebrate our language, but we are more than just the language, the language is just a doorway into our culture and our heritage. And I think that's critically important for us as we continue on. And so it's wonderful that we are now being able to see this rolled out as well. The great thing about uh, at the moment, and the only thing that we can have against the, the Tongans to compete, is that uh, they are the third largest Pacific group, only just. Samoan is still the largest, Cook Islands is the second, but our Tongans is the largest, second, third largest Pacific migrant group that's growing and growing faster than any other Pacific nation. And, uh, and I think that's, um, that's really important as well. 
And it's important about our language and our culture, our early childhood centers and all the things that we are doing to truly make a difference. One thing I love about the fact is that of the language week and we're celebrating is the theme. And the theme is Whakakoloa Aotearoa, Aki Ai Nofo E Kainga, A Kainga. And the wonderful thing about this theme is that it's about the language and the culture and it's about family. I know that when people are talking about how do we retain the language and our culture, it's not just about sending them into an early childhood centre or going to school or even going to university. The language when used in everyday conversation in our home is how we retain the language over that period of time. So I want to acknowledge the theme that you have here today throughout this year which is about the fact is, is that in family, we know our languages can thrive and that's critically important as well. I think the fact is, is that uh, for our Tongan uh, community, we can be proud too, because there's this proverb that says, kuku kao naka, to grasp the handle. Kao naka is the handle that uh, the net was tied to when trying to catch the lupe, a bird. The meaning of the proverb is to be alert and focus while completing or working on a task to not lose sight of your goal. And so one of the challenges that we have is that even though our language and for our Tongan community is strong now, we need to remember that we also too have different competing languages in New Zealand. Back home, it's not a problem. So here's where our challenge will lie. How can we continue to have our language still to be strong into the future? And I believe the fact is, is that the proverb says, gives us the answer. It's about when we're teaching it in our home, but also to how we can also um, evolve our language as we learn new things. So I'll give you an example. In the Cook Islands, for instance, in the uh, Cook Island language, uh, for a car, we say motoka. What do you say in Tonga? What's the name for, for a car? Motoka. 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 Oh, you just you just copied the Cook Islanders. <laughs> okay, okay. Here's another one for you. For a cat, the Cook Island word is meow. That's clever, eh? Because when they heard the sound of the cat, go meow. And so, so what's the word for for cat in Tongan? Bossy. Bossy. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you just, See how we're evolving the language. <laughs> it's amazing. You guys were so clever. How did you come up with that? I don't know. <laughs> and, I, and these are the things we need to continue to do to evolve the language, isn't it? Then why don't we try and find all of these new things? Okay, then. So what about computer? Is there a Tongan word for computer? <laughs> <laughs> what notebook? Did you say notebook? Say notebook? <laughs> I'm sure there's a word for it as well um, that we can. But those are the things I think that we need to be thinking about. Evolve our language in this culture so that we still hold it to be true. But let us also remember, as Reverend uh, Finau said to us, let us not forget our values of faith, our values of family, because that's what also retains our language into the future. Uh, it's an honor here to be here uh, this evening to celebrate uh, with you here. And I want to acknowledge the work of the ministry and working with our Tongan language year committee. I'm sorry, I said week committee the other time. Year committee to make sure the language continues on as well. And as only our Tongan can do, when I was seeing they were bringing in the brass instruments, you know, most people just bring a little box with a little thing. There was a pallet. There was people before. And uh, as John was saying, that if there's an emergency, we all have to carry all the instruments down. But that's what I love about this culture. And I love about the fact of uh, our Tongan people. Even though John was cheeky, I can now tell on him. He was cheeky to me the other day. He said, uh, I said, John, you, you don't forget that, um, you know, Tonga comes from Rorotonga. And he laughed for a moment and he looked at me and he said, Minister, but do you know what the word, how we say Rorotonga, where we come from? We say Lalo Tonga. Lalo means lower. <laughs> we are higher Tonga, you are lower Tonga. So there you go, John. I just told on your community about what you did. But 
Let us celebrate today and enjoy everything what it means to be in our presence here in our Tongan community, Malo, our people.